A reading from the first book of Kings. The brook near where Elijah was hiding ran dry, because no rain had fallen in the land. So the Lord said to Elijah, Move on to Zarephath of Sidon and stay there. I have designated a widow there to provide for you. He left and went to Zarephath. As he arrived at the entrance of the city, a widow was gathering sticks there. He called out to her, Please bring me a small cupful of water to drink. She left to get it, and he called out after her, Please bring along a bit of bread. She answered, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked. There is only a handful of flour in my jar and a little oil in my jug. Just now I was collecting a couple of sticks to go in and prepare something for myself and my son. When we have eaten it, we shall die. Elijah said to her, Do not be afraid. Go and do as you propose. But first, make me a little cake and bring it to me. Then you can prepare something for yourself and your son. For the Lord, the God of Israel, says, The jar of flour shall not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry, until the day when the Lord sends rain upon the earth. She left and did as Elijah had said. She was able to eat for a year, and Elijah and her son as well. The jar of flour did not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry, as the Lord had foretold through Elijah. The word of the Lord. Lord, let your face shine on us. When I call, answer me, O my just God. You who relieve me when I am in distress, have pity on me and hear my prayer. Men of rank, how long will you be dull of heart? Why do you love what is vain and seek after falsehood? Know that the Lord does wonders for his faithful one. The Lord will hear me when I call upon him. Tremble and sin not. Reflect upon your beds in silence. O Lord, let the light of your countenance shine upon us. You put gladness into my heart, more than when grain and wine abound. Dominus Fobiscum. Lexio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Matteum. Jesus said to his disciples, You are the salt of the earth. But if salt loses its taste, with what can it be seasoned? It is no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. 
A city set on a mountain cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and then put it under a bushel basket. It is set on a lampstand where it gives light to all in the house. Just so, your light must shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father. Verbum Domini. On Memorial Day, Father Dominic, Father Mike, Mark, and myself were flying back to Birmingham and we had a layover in Atlanta. And while we were there waiting for our flight to Birmingham, uh, Father Dominic had gone to walk off and uh, he had encountered a couple who was having trouble, their daughter was missing, they asked for prayers, and so he prayed right then and there. People going to and fro to their gates just prayed for this uh, couple and for their daughter. And then Father Mark and I were sitting at the gate, and there's a young man sitting across from us. He noticed we're dressed a little differently. And so he asked, well, what does that symbol on the front of your, your garb there mean? So as you know, we wear a monstrance on the front of our habits. We have a holy hour every day. We have devotion, of course, to the Blessed Sacrament. So Father Mark began to talk to him about the reality of the real presence. And uh, I chimed in, of course, too. And I always like to talk up and to bring up, well, what did the early Christians do? How did they worship. When they gathered together, what did they do? It's an important question. And I say one of those early Christians who gives us the most detailed account of what they did is St. Justin. So St. Justin, we just celebrated his feast on June 1st. He gives us a detailed description. It's actually a letter that he wrote to the Emperor of Rome to clear away any misgivings about Christianity. And so he tells, you can find this very easily on the internet, uh, just ser search St. Justin in the Eucharist, where he talks about they had the readings, they had a homily, they had a collection, they had bread and wine brought up, there was this prayer of thanksgiving, there was a great amen, and then he says, we receive these things not as ordinary food and drink, but as the flesh and blood of the incarnate Jesus. So we have been taught. This is 155 AD. So we're talking more with this young man, and he really hadn't been raised in any church. He would read the Bible. He had just been to some conference in Florida about uh, consciousness. And... And I was thinking the whole time, because I hadn't flown for a couple of years, I always would take along with me EWTN program guides or something related to EWTN. Because it's one thing to have a brief encounter with someone, it's another thing to give them something that will feed their soul later. But we did the best we could, so we wrote down EWTN, how he could access it, and so on and get more information. And that's important. You know, when Mother Angelica had the inspiration to begin this network, she was talking to Matt Scalise. He's a friend of mine. He was a head of engineering when I came here. And she said, Matt, we need to get on satellite television. That's how you can reach the most people. Matt said, well, I don't know anything about satellite TV. Well, find out. So eventually, the satellite dish, as you know, was installed here. And Matt was the one who was taking photographs that day of the installation of the, 
of the uh, satellite dish. I hadn't seen a lot of them. I had visited him and he'd show me some of these old pictures. And he told me that uh, after he had taken the film camera photographs, he went to the one hour photo, this is 1981, before digital cameras. The one hour photo developer, and he had them developed, and he comes across this picture that got his attention. And so he said, I gotta bring this to mother. I have to show this to mother right away. So he came right back here where the mother and the sisters were. And he said, mother, I have to show you a picture. It gave me chills when I saw it. And in the middle of that roll was a flame coming out of that satellite dish that was being installed. And I begin with a couple of those stories to talk about you know, what mother wanted to do was to place that light on the highest lampstand she could find. <laughs> and the highest lampstand was satellite television, a way to bring the gospel to many other people. And there's a wonderful initiative by EWTN of the media missionaries. So our own Jim Pinto heads up that group and they're actually going to be having a webinar. Anyone who wants to join that webinar, and the title of it is Continuing, um, Do You Want to Continue Mother's Legacy? What she wanted to do, to bring the gospel to as many people as possible. And so it's open to everyone. You can go to ewtnmissionaries.com, ewtnmissionaries.com. And you can learn about the media missionaries. And what the media missionaries are, are those people that help spread the gospel through the instrument of EWTN. So this is on a high lampstand. It's projecting this light. And yet many, many people don't know about it. This young man didn't know about it. He'd never heard of it. And so what the media missionaries do and what our our group here does, Jim Pinto and his group, is that they will give materials to people so that they can uh, bring those to the parish or they can bring them just out to the general public or they can share them with others. Because as I said, it's one thing to have an encounter with people and yes, we have to ask the Lord, how am I called to be a light in the darkness of this world? How do you want me to be a light in the world? in my particular circumstances, certainly through my example, through my prayer, through my faith. But whatever way, there's so much darkness in the world, isn't there? And what we need is light. And what did we hear today in our, our psalm? Lord, let your face shine on us. And the psalm itself said, oh Lord, let the light of your countenance shine upon us. You put gladness into my heart. So the Lord is the light of the world. He himself said that. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness. He will have the light of life. So we are his followers. We are children of light. And so he says, let your light shine before others so that they might see your good works and give glory to your heavenly Father. They might be drawn to he who is the light, Christ, and be led to the glory to which he is leading us and calling us to. So one of the ways that you can contribute, there's three ways if you go to that website, ewtnmissionaries.com, there's three ways that you can be a media missionary. Maybe you're not interested so much or you're nervous about going out or doing those sorts of things. Or maybe you're homebound. You're not able to really get outside the confines of your home or where you are. Well, the first way that you can contribute is through your personal prayer, praying for this mission, praying that the gospel that emanates from here, that light that emanates from here of the gospel, will fall on rich soil, will be received by people. Secondly, that you can have in some way to bring that message to your parishes. Thirdly, to the general public as well. 
So if you go to the EWTN website, you can find that out. And again, on Thursday, June 9th, so just a couple days from now, at 8 p.m. Eastern, they're going to have this webinar, Want to Continue Mother's Legacy? Question mark. Do you want to be part of bringing that gospel to others, of letting that light be brought to all in the house all throughout the world? Well, you can by being a media missionary. Join that webinar on June 9th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Go to EWTNmissionaries.com to get more information about that. And to think about this reality to today, too, we heard about Elijah the prophet in today's first reading from the first book of Kings, chapter 17. And he comes across this widow of Zarephath. And what's going on? Is the jars going empty? And the jugs going dry? The jars going empty? and the jug's going dry. There's a lot of people in that situation today. Physically, yes, but many spiritually. The jar's going empty, the jug's going dry. And what this widow of Zarephath needed was the word of the Lord from Elijah. The Lord, the God of Israel, says, the jar of flour shall not go empty, nor the jug of oil run dry. So it's going to be supplied for you. One of the Psalms, Psalm 63 says, For you my soul is thirsting, like a dry, weary land without water. But then it goes on to say, My soul shall be filled as with a banquet. And likewise, that beautiful Psalm 23, The Lord is my shepherd. He leads me to living water, to streams of water. He feeds me, you know, this banquet that he's prepared for me. That's what the Lord wants for everyone. If you've benefited from the gospel that's come to you through EWTN or any way, really, that we too are obliged then to share that gospel in whatever way that we can. Because others want to, and they need to benefit from it too. For many people, the jar is going empty, the jug's going dry. And I was thinking about that as well, too, that what do we have in the church? We have sacraments that are communicated often with oil, baptism, confirmation, holy orders. These are sacraments, anointing of the sick. They bring divine life to people. We need something more than what this world has. We need that light of Christ to enlighten our hearts. So think about that oil of the sacraments. It doesn't go dry in the church. And then we think about the flower, the flower in the jar. The church continues to feed us with the gift of the Eucharist that nourishes us and gives us strength along our journey. No, in the church, the jar doesn't go empty. The jar, the, the jug doesn't go empty. The, whatever it is, the jar, the jug don't go empty or dry. But they're always there to refresh us in the journey that we have throughout our life. So consider that, being part of the media missionaries, a way that that light that's on that tall lampstand of satellite television could project even farther to those who don't even know it's there. Last night I woke up in the middle of the night, so I turned on what's on the radio, EWTN radio, and it was Marcus Grody interviewing a woman who had been a fallen away Catholic. And one of the things that fed her soul and helped her to grow in a depth that she now really delights in was EWTN, as well as other wonderful resources that she had read and studied as having a child and teaching her child the catechism and learning it herself. The reality of the real presence was one of the things that she never really understood. 
and as we're going in this Eucharistic revival time, if we really understand the treasure that we have in the sacraments, in the Eucharist, then our jar is not going to go empty. The jug's not going to go dry because we have this divine satisfaction, the banquet that the Lord's prepared for our souls that begins even here and now and is a pledge of that life to come.